individuals are commanded to step away, directed to the guillotine, and terror is justified as an expression of virtue. A woman faces charges, including the depletion of the national treasury. Charges against a woman involve conspiracy, treason, and acting in the enemy's interest. A call for mercy for the innocent is countered by the urgency to recapture the port of Toulon from the British. A plan unfolds involving artillery and capturing a strategic fort. Correspondence expresses concerns about untrained troops and the need for surprise. The impending conflict unfolds, blending military strategy with personal struggles and local dynamics. Amidst battle, cries of Vive la France ring out. The scene unfolds with cannons, mortars, and heated shots. The chaos intensifies as soldiers reload and fire, defending against an attack. The relentless struggle for control and survival is encapsulated in the rapid sequence of orders and reactions on the battlefield. Napoleon Bonaparte is promoted to brigadier general amidst cheers for the Republic. Tensions rise as criticism against Robespierre surfaces, accusing him of reckless ambition and misuse of power. A confrontation ensues, highlighting the division among leaders. The scene culminates in an attempt to arrest Robespierre, marked by accusations and a failed execution. The specter of the guillotine looms over the tumultuous political landscape. A card game unfolds, punctuated by casual conversations. General Bonaparte is approached by Yu Boharnay, seeking his father's saber as a keepsake. Bonaparte hesitates due to weapon regulations, but eventually relents, touched by the sentimental request. A visit to a collection of confiscated items reveals a lack of identification. Yun expresses gratitude as the scene concludes. A card game continues, and General Bonaparte interacts with Yu Niboharnay. Later, he dines with a woman who discusses her past, warning him of potential scandals. Meanwhile, political unrest grows, with cries for the return of the king. The committee seeks Bonaparte's help to defend against a potential mob attack. Bonaparte agrees on the condition that he commands without interruption, signaling a shift in his role and responsibilities. Fires erupt as chaos ensues. Napoleon Bonaparte and Josephine are legally married. A celebration toasts Bonaparte as the savior of the Republic. Bonaparte departs for Egypt, detailing his military successes. Letters exchanged between Bonaparte and Josephine express deep love and longing. Back in France, Josephine yearns for more frequent communication. The passionate correspondence reflects their intense connection, despite the physical distance between them. Betrayal unfolds as Napoleon learns of Josephine's affair with Hippolyte Charles Lucille. The lady-in-waiting reveals the truth, leaving Napoleon in disbelief. Despite the personal pain, Napoleon decides to return home, risking accusations of desertion. He entrusts General Colbert with the command. The atmosphere shifts from marital distress to Napoleon's triumphant return. Napoleon confronts his wife's betrayal leading to a heated exchange where Josephine exposes his insecurities and need for her approval. In a moment of vulnerability, Napoleon admits he's nothing without her. The intense emotional dynamics shift as they grapple with fidelity and forgiveness Josephine presses him about his affairs, and Napoleon's desperation to keep her resonates as they navigate the complexities of their relationship, culminating in Josephine's plea for him not to leave. Napoleon returns to France critical of the deteriorating state under the directory. Frustrated with corruption and fearing monarchy's return, he proposes a coup to Barras, suggesting they become consuls alongside Duco. Barras hesitates, and Napoleon confronts him with documents announcing his resignation. Moulins faces similar pressure, but refuses to sign. Amidst the chaos, an emergency session considers nominations for a new directory, preparing for the looming threat of royalists and the shift in power. Amidst political turmoil, Napoleon confronts the Directory, accusing them of corruption and an impending royalist threat. Chaos ensues, and a violent attempt on Napoleon's life occurs. The deputies are restrained, and Napoleon gains support, declaring their outlaw status. As the chaos subsides, Napoleon emerges victorious, solidifying his position as First Consul. The scene shifts, showing a more personal side of Napoleon as he seeks tenderness from his confidant Josephine. The political and personal dynamics interweave, showcasing the complexity of Napoleon's rise to power. Amidst social events and diplomatic matters, Josephine welcomes guests, including the Duke of Avignon. 
A letter emphasizes Napoleon's desire for peace between England and France. Talleyrand advises caution with Napoleon's overtures, hinting at potential consequences if they are dismissed. The scene transitions to a gambling table, where Talleyrand warns of Napoleon's hunger for public approval. News arrives of Lord Whitworth's arrival, setting the stage for diplomatic challenges and political maneuvering. Napoleon confronts Whitworth about a letter of peace, revealing intricate political dynamics. Napoleon warns England, bowing uncertainty and fear. He demands respect and announces an end to peace overtures. Talleyrand proposes Napoleon's transition from first consul to victorious consul or king. Napoleon questions the idea, and Talleyrand encourages embracing the title king. The scene shifts to domestic matters, with Josephine concerned about her inability to conceive. Napoleon instructs her to take the waters at Aix-la-Chapelle, emphasizing the importance of producing an heir. The episode ends with a moment of vulnerability between the couple. Napoleon is crowned Emperor of the French. A debate on divorce unfolds as Josephine struggles with the idea. Talleyrand emphasizes the necessity of an heir for the empire's security and global peace. Napoleon, preparing for war, issues an ultimatum to Josephine, bear a child tonight, or face divorce. They confront years of unsuccessful attempts, and the tension escalates, revealing the personal challenges within their marriage. Napoleon expresses love for Josephine before heading to battle. He narrates the challenges of facing a united coalition and emphasizes his strategic superiority. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, preparations intensify. A letter to Josephine highlights the anniversary of their coronation and the shifting alliances. The scene shifts to soldiers setting up Camp Napoleon, assesses the situation and orders rest for the troops. The focus turns to an infantry sighting, signaling the impending confrontation. Battle ensues as soldiers stand ready and fire commands are exchanged. Tactical moves are discussed to deceive the enemy. The infantry engages in a strategic attack, attempting to seize higher ground. Cavalry enters from the west to flank the opponent. Chaos erupts with retreats and warnings of a trap. Cannons are uncovered, and intense firing follows. Reloading and strategic maneuvers continue amidst the fierce battle. The order is given to keep to one side, emphasizing the urgency of the situation. Amidst the talks of peace Napoleon meets Francis, the Russian czar in a rustic palace. Alexander's absence is noted, and conversation turns to Napoleon's alleged error in not taking the Russian and Austrian armies captive. The meeting takes an unexpected turn when Francis proposes a practical experiment to determine if Napoleon or Josephine is the cause of their childlessness, introducing Eleanor de Noël de la Plaine for the task. Tensions rise as the emperor faces an unexpected challenge. Francis confronts Napoleon, revealing that Eleanor is pregnant. A tense exchange follows, with Napoleon expressing weariness about divorce. Francis proposes a plan to fake the birth of Napoleon's heir using Eleanor. Napoleon accepts, asking Francis to be a witness to the charade. In an emotional conversation with Josephine, Napoleon explains the need for dissolution due to the state's interests. The imperial decree announces the dissolution of Napoleon and Josephine's marriage, emphasizing Napoleon's desire for an heir. Josephine and Napoleon bid a poignant farewell. The imperial decree dissolves their marriage, citing the need for France to have an heir. Josephine expresses her heartfelt wishes for Napoleon's happiness, acknowledging the separation. Napoleon reassures Josephine and advises her to maintain courage. They exchange affectionate words and express concern for each other's well-being. Josephine, now Fleur, starts a new chapter, while Napoleon faces the challenges ahead. Napoleon, seeking alliances, proposes to King Francis for the hand of Marie Louise. The Austrians, initially shocked, question the sincerity. Despite the initial resistance, the proposal is not treated as a joke. Meanwhile, the arrival of Marie Louise to meet Napoleon is marked by curiosity and compliments. The tone shifts when the emperor's son unexpectedly joins the scene. Napoleon, in a letter to Josephine, expresses sorrow over Tsar Alexander's actions and the need to invade Russia. He shares his determination to command the combined forces of several nations. The narrative shifts to the battlefield, showcasing intense moments of warfare and tactical command. The letter continues, revealing Napoleon's optimism after a victorious battle 
and his plan to resume the advance the next day. Napoleon advances toward Moscow, expressing thoughts of his distant love. As the French enter Moscow, they find an abandoned city set ablaze. The devastation prompts reflections on the brutal cost of war and the unexpected response of the Russians. Despite nearing Moscow, the harsh reality of the Russian winter and logistical challenges force a strategic retreat to Poland, marking a pivotal moment in the campaign against Russia. Napoleon receives letters from Josephine and struggles with the difficulties in the Russian campaign. Despite victories, the campaign takes a toll on his troops. Facing the stark realities of defeat, Napoleon writes to Josephine expressing his love and acknowledging the challenges ahead. The political landscape shifts, leading to his forced abdication. In the aftermath, Napoleon grapples with the decision to relinquish power, declaring his deep love for France and Josephine. The terms of his abdication and exile are outlined, and he contemplates the impact on his legacy. Josephine encourages Hortense to embrace her inner strength, while Napoleon, exiled on Elba, expresses his yearning for Josephine and plans to return to France. Napoleon seizes a ship and sets sail for France, causing concern among those aware of his return. Josephine, who is ill, awaits Napoleon's arrival. As news of Napoleon's return reaches the French court, tension and anticipation rise, leading to a moment of revelation in the royal chambers. Napoleon, having landed in France, addresses the 5th Regiment, expressing his longing to return home. The soldiers enthusiastically pledge allegiance to him. Meanwhile, the French court learns of Josephine's death from diphtheria, causing distress. In a moment of tension, Napoleon rallies support, and allies plan to form an army against him. The news of Napoleon's return sparks a call to action among European powers, prompting a collective response. European leaders express disdain for Napoleon, eager to free the world from his tyranny. With preparations underway, they strategize against his return. As Napoleon plans, he emphasizes the importance of swift strikes against Wellington and Bice. Meanwhile, the rain complicates the battlefield, delaying the offensive. The Allies, including Prussian General Bilice, prepare for the confrontation, and Wellington encourages patience to hold the ground. The stage is set for a decisive battle, with Napoleon in the crosshairs of the enemy. With the rain subsided, the battlefield gears up for a decisive moment Napoleon, displaying disdain for personal combat, emphasizes the importance of generals focusing on strategic leadership. As Prussian forces, led by Belcher, approach Wellington and his army prepare cannons. The Allies coordinate artillery fire, inflicting damage on the French. Amid the chaos, infantry advances, and the battle intensifies. Napoleon, aware of the pressing need to act before Bielcher's arrival, readies his forces for a critical engagement. As the battle unfolds, cavalry charges, and the Allies face relentless attacks Wellington's forces, urged to stand their ground, form squares against the French onslaught. Prussian reinforcements, led by Bielcher, join the fray. British and Prussian infantry fend off French cavalry with disciplined fire. Amid chaos, Napoleon rallies his troops, emphasizing Austerlitz's bravery. The Allies maintain their defensive lines, showcasing determination against the relentless French offensive. As Prussian cavalry counterattacks, the battle reaches a critical juncture. Napoleon, despite his defeat, maintains his confident demeanor during captivity in England. General remarks about the difficulty of accepting others' failures. Napoleon expresses interest in the English countryside, but his visit is cut short as he faces exile. The British government permits him only a few companions, restricting him to the remote island of St. Helena under Governor Hudson Lowe's watch. Napoleon contemplates the size of the island as he learns about his impending exile. Napoleon faces exile to St. Helena, a remote island in the Atlantic. He contemplates the isolation, with correspondence monitored and daily verification of his presence. As the ship sails, he reflects on his actions and the consequences of his downfall. Meanwhile, scenes of girls learning history and Napoleon's playful interaction with them provide a contrasting tone. A letter from someone expressing love and longing for Napoleon is shared, hinting at a complex emotional landscape during his final days.